So in this video, we're going to go through the second rule of inference. And this second rule of inference is what we call the law of syllogism. And I think that's how you pronounce it, syllogism or syllogism, whatever. But here's our symbolic form. P implies Q and Q implies R. All that implies P implies R. And this is the same thing in tabular form. We have P, P implies Q, Q implies R. All together that, that indicates the conclusion would be P implies R. So what's happening is we're actually just getting rid of the Q's because since P implies Q and Q implies R, we could just get rid of the middleman and just make it so that P implies R. So the example here is if integer uh, 35,244 is divisible by uh, 396, then 35,244 uh, is divisible by 66. So this would be our P, and that would be our Q. And if, uh, if 35,244 is divisible by 66, our Q, then 35,244 is divisible by 3, which is our R. So, thus, if 35,244 is divisible by 396, then 35,244 is divisible by 3. So, if P is divisible, uh, so then that's pretty much P, and this is pretty much R. So then, if this implies that and that implies this, then why can't we just get rid of the middleman and do P implies R? So that's the idea behind that, and that's what we did. So that's the law of syllogism, and it's pretty simple if you have, as you have seen. So let's just do a simple example using both modus ponens and syllogism. So here I have uh, four statements. Brad is playing StarCraft. So let's have that be our P. So the first statement, that is our P. So if Brad is playing StarCraft, then he is not studying. So that's P implies not Q because a Q, we'll, ha we'll have Q be he is studying. So not Q would be uh, the negation symbol Q. So that's our second statement. Now if Brad is not studying, so that is not Q, then his dad will not give him allowance. So again, uh, if his dad gives him allowance, we'll call that R. So not give him allowance, that would be not R. So negation symbol R. So as you can see, we have our that's awful. As you can see, we have our two two symbols that could be just gotten rid of. These are the middleman, so we could just get rid of them. And then at the end, we'll just come up with a con our conclusion, which is P uh, implies not R. Or no, that's not it. Therefore, Brad's dad will not give him allowance. So that's modus ponens in the process. What happened is pretty much we just got rid of uh, these two Q's. So what is left? It was P and uh, P implies not R. And using modus ponens, we got not R. So we got. Brad is not Brad is playing StarCraft. If Brad is playing StarCraft and he's not studying, if he's not studying, then his dad will not give him allowance. Therefore, using both syllogism and modus ponens at the end here, we found that Brad's dad will not give him allowance or not R. So let's just go through that in more in more detail. So using validity establishment, here's one method of finding it. So the first way is we have P implies not Q. So that is a premise. That is one of our hypotheses. That is a premise. And secondly, uh, not Q implies not R. And that is also a premise. Not premises, but a premise. That's my OCD ringing the door or ringing the bell. <coughs> so the third step, what we have is P implies not R. And this is uh, the law of syllogism. And yeah, so that's pretty much the law of syllogism acting there. And then we get 
the fourth step we get P by means of a premise because it was given to us in the, in the statement so for the fifth we get uh, we get not R by modus ponens another way of doing this is well it's pretty much we're just the second method is just rearranging all of these uh, all these steps so again there are five steps first would be laying out our premises so P and P implies not Q and these two are premises and this will give us not Q by means of modus ponens and then we'll plug in our second premise which is not Q not R and that is a premise and then we'll have not R which is modus ponens because not Q not Q implies not R well these two are on the same side and they're not Q so we just got rid of them and we end up with not R and that's how we use logism and uh, we gave a little more uh, detail on modus ponens and how it's used. So other than that, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you guys again next time.